What's going on everyone? We are in a series called Wanderers and we're following the Israelites and their departure from Egypt. Now, uh, Exodus means a mass departure of people. And so when you think of the word Exodus and departure, that means leaving. If we were to go to the airport, we're going on vacation and we were to uh, go to the airport, there's two places we could go. We could go to arrivals or departure. Departure is when you go, when you're planning on going. Arrival is when you've come to your destination. And so the Israelites, they have not arrived yet. They were in slavery in Egypt. God called a man named Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And so uh, this is our clue for today. Okay, Maybe you, you've seen maybe something like this, but our clue has water and a dry space in between. Moses, remember the three signs that God gave Moses, okay? The staff turns into a snake, his hand and his cloak is then diseased, and then he does it again and it's normal. And then he tells him a third one, get water from the Nile, put it on dry ground and it'll be blood. So Moses and Aaron, they go to the Israelite leaders, okay? So these were the people who were enslaved. And he goes and he, he tells them and he shows them the miracles that they did, that he could do, the signs and wonders. And they believed him. They were like, this is amazing. And they started to glorify God because they knew that this could be it. This could be their way out. And so Moses and Aaron uh, go to Pharaoh and they tell him, they say, hey, God told us to tell you to let the Israelites go. Pharaoh's like, oh, is that so? Who is the Lord? And these were the questions that Moses knew Pharaoh was going to, excuse me, Pharaoh was going to ask. And so he's like, hey, our God sent us. God told us. And if you don't listen, plagues will come. And uh, plagues were like a bad event, bad event. So he ends up saying, well, no, I don't really care. And he even ends up making it harder on the Israelites. So Pharaoh is over the Egyptians and he ends up making it harder. So Moses and Aaron were trying to obey exactly what God told them. And, uh, but God told them that Pharaoh wasn't going to listen. He already told them the outcome as well. And so have you ever felt like you were trying to do the right thing, but someone was mad at you for it? Or maybe you did the right thing and something worse happened, something bad. I can only imagine how Moses and Aaron were feeling because in Exodus 5.22, it says this, uh, that then Moses went back to the Lord and protested. Why have you brought all this trouble on our own people, Lord? Why did you send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh as your spokesperson, he has made e uh, he has been even more brutal to your people, and you have done nothing to rescue them. And Moses was upset, and maybe even angry with God, because after he went to, to Pharaoh, Pharaoh ended up making an order that would make it harder for the Israelites as slaves. And so he's angry, he's upset. God, you told us to do this. Why did you tell us to do it? If, you, if you're not setting them free, you haven't done anything to rescue them. And God assures them, I have heard the groans or complaints or cries of the people. And so I, he's like, I know the covenant and promise that I made with them. I'm going to fulfill it. So Moses went back to the Israelites and to tell them what God was done, but they refused to listen. They were like, hey, mm -mm, I'm not going to listen to that because look how hard everything got for us. But they were discouraged. And I could only imagine how hard it would be for them to having to work even harder after they was like, hey, uh, you guys are going to be set free. Look at the signs and wonders that I can do. And so, but sometimes before God delivers us from things or sets us free or even have a breakthrough, maybe like you're really praying for something and it's not happening and it's getting harder or rougher. Sometimes something amazing comes out of it. God, uh, before God delivers you or does something amazing, life usually gets even harder. But that's the cool thing about God is that God is with us through the whole thing. We are in a spiritual battle, not against flesh and blood, but a spiritual battle where, where Satan does not want us to believe God. And so he tries hard to get us to doubt his promises. And that was going on here. But let's get back to the story. So God tells Moses and Aaron to go back to Pharaoh and tell him that, hey, tell my people, uh, tell Pharaoh to let my people go, let the Israelites leave. And so Moses is like, I don't want to do this. It's going to get worse. But he was thinking of all the wrong that could happen. He wasn't thinking about how all the great things that could happen. And so 
he goes and uh, I'm not I'm, he wasn't even like super confident in his talking skills but when it's something God tells us to do uh, he will be with us through it and so we shouldn't stop when it gets hard we should uh, keep obeying what God tells us or tells us to say and that's exactly what Ma Moses and Aaron did and so they go back and Moses does the miracle he takes his staff he throws it on the ground it turns into a snake but then all the magicians that Pharaoh had could do the same thing. And so then he ends up just like how he predicted to most Pharaoh's his heart was hardened and he refused to, to listen just as God predicted. So then God starts sending plagues. And so we'll go through these pretty quick, but the first one, he goes, Hey, let my people get Moses says, let my people go. Pharaoh says no. And a plague comes. He, uh, the first one was that the Nile river turned into blood. And God tells Mo Moses and Aaron, go back to Pharaoh. He says, let my people go or else I'll send frogs. And he didn't do it. And so frogs came, tons of frogs. Then gnats came. Then even Pharaoh's uh, magicians believed him. But Mo Pharaoh did not. Then God told Moses and Aaron to tell Pharaoh, hey, let my people go. And he said, no. So flies came and it covered the land. It was so dark. Then God told Moses and Aaron to go back to Pharaoh and say, hey, let my people go or else I'll strike your livestock. And Pharaoh still says no. And so, but the thing with this is that it didn't affect the Israelites' livestock. God was still protecting the Israelites through all these plagues and hard times. And then it happens over and over and over again. Moses and Aaron go back. Let my people go. He keeps saying no. So then we see boils. We see hail, locusts, and darkness. And so that's nine plagues so far. But Pharaoh still did not listen. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, but God protected the Israelites. And so then God, and Mo, uh, God tells Moses and Aaron that the firstborn sons of all, every family in Egypt will die and gives the Israelites a set list of things to do to protect them. And one of the things was to sacrifice a lamb or goat, take the blood and smear it over the door frame. So if you picture a door, maybe you see a door close to you, it'd be like both sides and the top smeared all the way across the door and that God would pass over those houses. And so when God struck this plague down, he would skip or pass over the blood on the door frames. And so it happens at midnight, it happens and you could hear the cries. This is what it says, uh, Exodus 12, 29 and 30. And I'm going to read verse 30. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the people of Egypt woke up during the night and a loud wailing was heard throughout the land of Egypt. There was not a single house where someone had not died. Could you imagine this? The 10th plague, the firstborn, a son of every household. Could you imagine hearing the cry? Million, maybe millions of people, hundreds of thousands of people, all crying in, in one night. And then Pharaoh, he summons Moses and Aaron and tells them to get out. To, he kicks them out. And so they start grabbing all their stuff and they leave and then they're on a journey so they're running out they get out and as the israelites they were camping in the wilderness pharaoh heard that the israelites did flee and that and he and guess guess what he did he ends up being like he changes his mind he's like no way we gotta sit we gotta go get them back and so he's thinking why did i do that so he sends 600 of his best chariots along with the rest of the chariots and all these people and the Egyptian military, or the Egyptian militia, catches up to the Israelites. And so the uh, Israelites are now like, God, why did you bring us all the way out here if you're just going to have the, the Egyptians come and kill us? And so this is actually what Moses says to the people when they're complaining. Moses isn't afraid. Exodus 14, 13 and 14. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. So the Israelites had come to a sea. And then what happened is that Moses had a lot of faith. And so God told him to pick up his staff. And when he raised it over the sea, the sea split, which is our clue for today. Look at the icon. It split. And so the Israelites, they run through, they go through. Uh, 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 they, there's a lot of people, not just like maybe a class size, but like hundreds of thousands of people. It's incredible. So they all go through. And then the Egyptians chase after them. 
They chase after them. They run through. But by that time, all the Israelites got to the other side. And so he raised his arm again, and the waters rushed back into place, and all the Egyptians, not a single one, survived. And so this is what it says in Exodus 14:31. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. So our main point for today is that God delivered his people. God delivers people. And he's working for them even when the Israelites did not believe him. And that's the same for us. God is working for us. God delivers us. And he sets us free even when we, we don't see it. Maybe the Israelites saw all these bad things happening and they didn't see Moses and Aaron going to Pharaoh. They didn't see all that work. And so God is working for us all the time, and he will deliver us from all of our hardships, but he also sets us free, and we learn through difficult times. And so I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We will see you next week.